Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Brian Calloway, an award-winning wedding photographer based in Southern California. With his equally talented wife, Allison, he leads Calloway Gable Studios. Together, they educate and inspire other photographers and artists with appearances at Mystic Seminars, June Bug Workshops, and Creative Live. Next, he'll be at Silk Inspire in Goa, India, where I look forward to hanging out with him, getting to know him even better. But hey, welcome to the show, Brian. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, enjoying my uh, Southern California green tea. There you go. I just made fun of you. I know that. But uh, yep. you know what? <laughs> staying healthy staying, staying healthy is such a critical part of being a wedding photographer, isn't it? Well, absolutely, especially as you get older. Yes. Uh, you, you need to be in physical shape. It's uh, a, a job of carrying heavy equipment. Absolutely. And, and doing, it, doing it as many weekends in, in a row as possible. Um, absolutely. The, what's exciting about you being in India, honestly, is the, the fact that I've seen your work so many times and I've said, wow, my jaw drops. And I'm thinking, who is this guy? Who are these people who are, who are making these beautiful photographs? And here you are. You're going to be in Goa, India for Silk Inspire. How did you get involved with Silk Inspire? Uh, Sethi reached out. I think um, I was referred by my good friend, Franck Botnay from France. Awesome. Um, who's, a, who's a super good friend, and we've taught together a few times. Um, I'm just really excited to come back to go. I actually photographed a Bengali wedding in, in Mamalapuram, south of Chennai, on the east side of India, uh, and just fell in love with the country, fell in love with the, the ritual of the wedding. Um, it's just something, you know, what's interesting, too, for our business here in California, we actually shoot most of our work uh, destination U.S., destination international. A lot of it is, is, is South Asian Indian uh, weddings. Um, and so it's interesting to see the difference between sort of United States South Asian weddings and then to go to India and see that as well. So, so, I'm how, just, so how are they different? Excited. You know, I don't know. I haven't done enough in South in, in India to know. I'm just excited to come to to go to, to sort of explore awesome. how they're different. Awesome. I'm I'm I know that certainly the ones in the states are are, are Americanized um, for sure, uh, and it's interesting to see how the People getting married are first born in U.S. and how the parents are born in India and how the kids are keeping the traditions alive of their parents. And I'm always wondering, will that last to the next generation? Will they pass that down as well? Uh, because when you do the ceremonies, often you see the um, grandparents and the parents kind of directing what's going on during the wedding ceremony. Indeed. And I just wonder if that's going to continue. So anyways, I'm interested to explore that a little bit when I'm there. Awesome. Uh, Excellent. it is such a big part of our business. Yeah, we've got a great lineup of speakers at Silicon Inspire, and, and it's exciting to see that you're making it all the way from Southern California to Goa. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your work, um, the ones that sort of caught my eye uh, over the last few years. And, you know, one of the things I've read on your website and actually read a, uh, a blog post that I think you were involved in writing for Creative Live is about creating uh, an incredible experience for your clients. I think that seems to be central to what you try to achieve. Uh, is that is that what you would factor in as a as, as a as what has caused you That's to a succeed? Massive, a massive massive part of our business is is the idea of creating a, an extraordinary experience for our client. Um, we are in probably one of the most saturated wedding photography markets in the world in Los Angeles. I mean, and I think now pretty much every market is saturated with photographers because the barrier uh, to entry is so so low. You don't need a degree. All you have to do is get a camera and a website and you're a wedding photographer. So how do you stand out? So for us, we've always uh, just thought that we have to create an experience from the moment they we talk to them on the phone until years after their wedding. We're, we're, we're continually creating an extraordinary customer service experience. And then when we're shooting and with them on their wedding day, we're invested. We know who all the people are. Um, we're giving hugs. We're dancing with babies or dancing, kissing babies. We're having a good time with them. We're invested. Fantastic. Not dancing with babies. That would be weird. Well, you could be. I mean, I dance with, I dance with my baby. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, you, you are, you are a, a father of uh, two girls. Is uh, that two right? girls. 
two girls, yeah. And yep. interestingly, I read that you were involved in the in the Hollywood industry for as an actor. Is that right? Yeah, I was an actor for uh, ten years. Okay. Uh, my my first job was on the uh, show Seinfeld. My first union job. Wow, uh, not bad. Well, yeah, I said the word "ouch" twice. That was it. But it got me in the union, and I still get checks for fifteen cents every every three months. <laughs> it's not even worth the, the postage, but I, I get them. There you go. Yeah, let's let's swing back to your work as a photographer. Don't mind. <laughs> and one of the sure. things one of the things I, I've also caught um, that caught my attention was, of course, the way you light your uh, your, your your clients. I mean, they're it's gorgeous. Uh, what do you, you do in terms of? Uh, getting the light where it needs to be because on a wedding day it's hard to really move things around so quickly you've got to be on the move all the time having a, a do, you, do you work with an assistant or is it Allison who's holding the light when you're photographing and you hold her light when she's photographing well how does that work out well uh, I would say that we're always you know we're always two photographers uh, a lot of times Allison and I will photo be photographing weddings separately on the weekend we don't use an assistant although I would love to have an assistant but for the most part if it's natural light we we like to do i think what we call our work is sort of directed photojournalism in other words when we walk into a room we assess the situation we find out where the best light is and then we make sure all, all those great moments are happening in that really amazing natural window light um and so we're going to direct the scene there we're not going to direct the scene once it starts happening but we're going to direct where things happen so you uh, actually tell people to move? Is that what you're saying? Oh, we'll move. I'll walk into a hotel room and move all the furniture, uh, so that they're in the best spot. Um, and then within that, we'll have all the key players sort of just in that area, so that they're in the best light. Um, and then throughout the day, uh, we have everything on us. We have our strobes on us. We have our video light on us. Um, and so depending upon what situation we walk into. We just go, is that a strobe, is that a video light, and we're able to do it super fast. Uh, oftentimes, you can do video light with your hand and the camera yourself if you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, lately we've been doing um, dancing and reception uh, by ourselves, one, one camera and flash off to the side. So a lot of what I want to talk about in Goa is how to elevate your work with light. And so I go through a whole thing about how to elevate it when you're in natural light, what to look for. Uh, like, for instance, looking for cross light, looking for harsh light, looking for sh pockets of light. And then um, I want to get into how to elevate your work with off-camera strobes, with, with, with using flash, and then um, video light. So we're, we, we use video light, constant light, uh, in a lot of our work. A lot of the work that you see on, on the Fearless Awards and stuff, a lot of that is, is shot with video light. So I want to get into that, too. And we have that all with us uh, on the wedding day, which is crazy. Which is why you need to work out. Well, well, I want to circle back. Yeah, that's why, you, especially if you get older. Yeah, it's tough. You know, it's, real it's tough. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you establish a clear distinction with your clients? Uh, you know, some of them may expect you, based on your portfolio, to see, uh, you know, when they see pose portraits versus the more photojournalistic moment, I guess. How do you differentiate that with your clients? in that moment well i think we have marketed ourselves into a niche of photographers that are really good at creating these these epic portraits but at the same time we're we're really good at creating or documenting photojournalistic moments uh and that's something that the second part we came from a commercial background so the and a fashion background actor allison was a model I learned how to light being on movie sets, and, and, and that's where I sort of learned how to do that. So joining contests, which I'm a huge proponent of, really helped us become aware of photojournalism. And, and probably six years ago, we really started, five years ago, we really started honing in on, on how to get good at that. And so now when we meet new clients, we, we're, we tell them, you know, we're really good at this. We do the photojournalism, uh, photojournalism as well, and also... We're excellent at lighting the work. So if you have a nighttime wedding, if you have a lot of events happening at night, um, we separate ourselves from the competition because everyone knows us in town as the ones that can light difficult weddings. So you, uh, said, you so set the other, expectation then, right? Which circles back to creating an amazing customer or client experience is because we're managing their expectations from the get-go. Um, we're also 
sometimes if we get a lead from Fearless or from one of the contests, uh, we're, we're going to manage our expectations as well, saying this doesn't mean that you're going to get a, an award from your wedding. Um, so, yeah, it all starts from that. We have, you know, we can talk about this in Goa too. We have a lot of uh, awesome. like questionnaires that we use with our clients. We have a lot of like templates when we talk to them on the phone. Um, a lot of it just really boils down to getting to know them, taking the time to talk to them, taking the time to find out what's important for them and taking yourself out of the equation, doing what they want, not I'm shooting for my art. No, this to me is a customer service job uh, where I am delivering what my client wants. Uh, and so that's a big key for us. And that's what helps us uh, market to the more luxury high end of the market as well. Um, and so creating that client experience, uh, under promising and over delivering, uh, managing expectations, and then also delivering art. Awesome. One the of the things time. that is significant about your art is the expressions that these clients have in, in, in their photographs. How do you, how do you have them emote in such a way that makes it into your portfolio or into so, their wedding album, for instance? So investing in them like we do, um, we become invisible very quickly. So we're able to, you know, it's interesting. We did a, a, a we've done a bunch of Orthodox Jewish weddings in New York where um, the, the, the males and the females are separated. And when we first started doing those, those weddings, they had said that ne they had never seen a photographer or a filmmaker uh, in the dancing with the people. Um, and we do it in a way that's not, it's not intrusional, but it's, it's not being an intrusion because they've all gotten to know us and like us that we're part of the celebration. And that's how we're able to capture these moments close and sort of at the apex of the moment as well. Um, and that's it. And then during portraits, we're able to get it during portraits by what we do is we sort of just set up a scene so the way we want it to look. And then we just set them free. We set, we start, we try to make them laugh. We try to make them joke. We try to get them to connect so that the portraits also feel uh, relaxed awesome. and not, not posed. Fantastic. That, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that is amazing that you're able to sort of have all of this. I mean, I guess in a way, you and Allison have a system, right? I mean, it's a, probably Absolutely. It's an unwritten system that you know, okay, well, we, we are going to try and do this with this client because of the answer, answers they have responded to in this manner. So you, you, right. you, you we, really... We actually... Go ahead. So I think we're going to do a work... I think we're part of a Go as a workshop, and we actually do have a system that we teach in our workshops. We call it the Callaway Gable sort of approach to portraits, but it's a way that when, you, when you're stuck, uh, it's just a, uh, doing portraits of a couple. It's just a sort of a real fast way to go through a sort of a checklist uh, of things that you can do to get people to connect to, to create different um, scenes. Um, and so we can do that in our workshop. We can also, I think, go through the client experience thing. I think it would be super helpful to people. Fantastic. Um, yeah. There's a lot to look forward to in Goa, for sure, right? Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait I can't to wait dance, either. too. What's that? I can't wait to dance. <laughs> Here you go, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is going to be a great, great event. I mean, people like Brian, is Allison going to join you? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Okay. So, so, yeah, we still don't know yet. We we are hopeful. Hopefully, she she'll be able to make it, but we don't know. I hope so. Uh, yeah. For a couple months. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. Good. Yeah. Um, th this is this has been a thrill, really. Honestly, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah. I, I can't wait to see you in action on the dance floor and also in the in the workshops. Uh, yeah. That we're gonna, that we're going to have at Silk Inspire in Goa, uh, folks. The dates are October sixth through the tenth. Uh, get there early if you can. I'm going to be there a couple of days early, and I'm going to stay until the very last event and then take Yay. off. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it and I hope to see you there too. Yeah, and I just want to say I'm, I'm just really excited to be there, and uh, I'm an open book. I just really love this industry so much. I really feel like uh, wedding photography is becoming the industry in photography. Uh, the art is just the art that people are doing around the world is incredible, and I just want to share and learn as well, and just be part of it. And so, I can't wait. Awesome, thanks, Brian. Bring a green, bring a green tea. There you go. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. See ya. Yep. You too.